One main world, one creation dream. Yeah, we already end the waiting time for the class. So welcome guys, welcome for all of you that are accessing right now. So let's start with the class, guys. Um, Grant bis uh, went beside the bicycle, is just sending you the UID for him. So I'm just going to show that in the chat. And uh, let's continue with this, okay? For this class, guys, as always, we are going to have... Okay, sorry for the dyslexia. Let's see here. We are going to start with doing the basic triggers for uh, the map, okay? So we are going to do something really easy. We are going to do this, the basic systems that you should have for any kind of map, okay? And also we are going to start making the triggers for the gameplay, okay? So as an example, make the pliers one uh, and start the pliers with the right amount of items, okay? And then we are going to start to do the pipeline system. That means that your pliers will be able to crunch or to get into a pipeline in your case if you are doing another kind of game as an example. If you are doing a pipeline system, it's going to be probably to crunch and to get into the pipeline. But if you are doing a medieval game and probably you are using caves under the wall, you can use the system to just do the same. Or as an example, if you are going to do a castle and you have sec secret passages here on in between the walls, you can use this to just enter in that area, okay? And finally, we are going to do the generator system, uh, so your players will be able to fix the generators and also to actually, um, well, you can change that, of course, there's no need to be a generator, but this system will help you out to create that dynamic, that, some, that the player needs to fix some things around the map to open the door, okay? It's okay. So I see that Max, that is Basti, is a, and also Green Bicycler, wants to know what there are some triggers. Don't worry, guys, we are going to start with that, okay? And we are going to access to the edition mode, okay? So, the first scripts that we are going to make are just easy scripts, scripts that you have to have in any kind of map, okay? Not for this one, it's just something that is going to improve the speed of your maps, that is going to reduce the amount of lag in your maps, okay? So we are going to go just to this screen where you can edit all the triggers that is right up here. You are going to select triggers and we are going to change the name for the trigger set that we got right here. Or if you already have some triggers, just create a new trigger set, okay? So the first one that you are going to put is going to be gameplay, okay? That's going to be the name for the trigger set. Remember, you can put any name, but I highly advise you to have the same names that I got here, so you are going to avoid, be a little bit um, loose in the conversation that we are going to have, okay? And the first one that we are going to create is Minigame, okay? So what is going to do uh, Minigame? Minigame is going to start um, the timer, and just remember this, and let me show you very quickly here. For this, I think I need to disactivate some systems here, Okay, so when you start the game, you are going to, okay. Actually the system that creates that is the system that I just disactivate, so I have to activate it back. And when you start the game, you are going to have a time, a countdown here, okay? And if you see this cooldown, or sorry, this timer is going to have information for the pliers. So the red plier is going to see capture the pliers, the actual, the, that is the monster, of course. The other pliers, as an example, the, the normal pliers are going to see here, repair the generators, and the victims, the pliers that I capture, will see, wait until you get rescued for the other pliers, okay? So, we are going to start that, so the first uh, trigger that we are going to do is that we are going to do or create this specific cooldown with the time that you need, okay? So, how do you do that? For uh, creating this trigger at the beginning of the map, you are going to hit here and you are going to add a new action, okay? The action is game logic and the, when the game is created, it actually is going to start the trigger when we create the map. And the action is going to be timer, operated, uh, countdown timer, run countdown timer. Remember, we have two options. 
cooldown is or cooldown is going to actually take the time that you give to the system and it's going to, to start moving backwards. So if you give 10, it's going to start counting in 10, then there's going to be the 9 and then the 8 and so on until the number 0. And the other one, the one that only says run timer, is going to do it in the other way, vice versa. That means that it's going to start in zero and it's going to end in the number or well, whenever you want it, okay? So as an example, if you start, it's going to start in once, next a second is going to be in two and three and it's going to keep increasing, okay? So the, as we are going to place a time that is going to end, we are going to use round countdown timer. When you do that, you are going to get this menu, okay? So the first one is the game timer, okay? So if you hit here, we are going to create a new variable. The variable name is game timer, okay? So just hit create new variable. And when you hit create a new variable, okay, you are going to get this interface. Just put the name here, game timer, just like a habit. So you will be able to follow what I did, a game timer. Of course, I already have it, right, created, so I'm going to just put another name, okay? And when you got it, when you complete with the game timer name, you are going to see it here. Now, for the time, the cooldown is the amount of seconds that you are going to get for a, the full game, okay? So here is the trick, guys. I put a eight... A 895 seconds what you can do is just use any kind of calculator guys and remember your map is going to have 60 seconds per, per minute okay so if you want as an example to place five minutes or your map is going to last five minutes what you do is just multiply 60 by the amount of minutes that you want to have so in my case it's going to give me 300 okay so if you notice, uh, my map is going to be played in almost, uh, in almost, and it is, uh, this is very important, 15 minutes, okay? So remember, you take 60 and you multiply that for 15, that is the amount of minutes that you want it, and it's give me 900. Actually, this is going to have five seconds less because I do some strips before that, but that's okay, you don't need it to do it. If you want it, just place here 900, okay? and the amount of time that you want it. My advice is to keep it in 600, if that is going to be 10 minutes, okay? And the second option, the one that says repeat timer, as false, okay? That's very important. And we end the first trigger. That's going just to start the system, so we always are going to have um, this system operating, okay? What will be the next option? It's going to be the win trigger, okay? So, Remember that the way that the players are using to win the game is that after some times when they repair all the different uh, like um, generators, this door is going to be open and if they will be able to exit from this door, they will be able to win, okay? That's the main target for the players. So what you are going to do, remember I told you in the first class to create your exit door. Okay, so your exit door should be covered like this one. And when you, what you are going to do is just getting apart from the door, give a little bit of way that the players can use to walk around before one, okay? And you are going to create an area. To create the area, remember, you just need to hit here on tool mode. And you have different options here. You are going to use the first one. This will allow you to have this interface. So with this, you can create an area, okay? So remember, to create an area, just hit whenever you are going to hit at the first point of the area and then move your mouse or your, your screen until the second area and then hit again to have the area created. Of course, I already have my area, so I'm going to delete this one. We are going to delete it. But with this area system, you are going to create an area at the end of your exit, okay? So whenever the players touch this area, the game is going to be over and the players are going to want. So I put an area that covers all that point, so players will always touch that part, and I rename that area, so remember, for renaming your area, you need to press this small button or use the letter B in computer, and select the area that you want to rename, okay? In my case, it's going to be this one. I put it one game, okay? All right, once you have this area created and rename it, remember it's very important to rename your areas because probably after some point you are going to have a lot of areas and it's going to be confused for the players. 
what you are going to do is that you are going to create a new trigger, okay? The name of the trigger is going to be win. Remember to create a new trigger, you just need to hit here. And you are going to add the next event. First event is going to be plier and when any plier enters to the area, okay? When you add that, you are going to have this screen. You need to select on the enters. You need to select choose area and you are going to select the area that you just created, the one that says one game, okay? Now, the condition is that the player needs to be on the red in the blue team, okay? So, remember, to add uh, the player condition, just go to player and determine player uh, team is going to actually create this, okay? So first you are going to see this completely close. Remember to expand all the sections. And in player steam, you need to select players in trigger event. You are going to have it here. Yes. And the team needs to have um, the different options. You need to select the team number two. Remember team number two is the team for the players, okay? For the actual human players, okay? So if any of those players enters on here, you are going to stop right there you are going to create two new triggers, okay? So just hit on create new trigger once and you are going to rename it to blue win, okay? And then you are going to hit again into create new trigger, okay? And this trigger name is going to be green will or yeah, green win, okay? Those are going to do just exactly the same, but we are going to check that conditions for every one of the players, okay? So on the first one on blue wind, you are not going to put any event. You are going to add a condition and the condition is going to be plier and determine plier team. Just like the other, you are going to expand. You are going to put pliers in trigger events. If it gives you just into its trigger, not in the other. In this one, that doesn't have any event. The orange color, that means that is okay, okay? Yes, and then the plier number two, the team number two, okay? And then the action is going to be plier, allow plier to win. That is this one, okay? And in allow plier to win, you need to be sure that here it says plier in trigger event. And that's it. You are going to do just exactly the same for the other one. But very important, huge, huge advice here, guys. It's that on here, in the condition, you need to change for the team tree. So, that's it. With these two already created, you are going to go back to this section, the section that says gameplay, okay? And in the trigger that we create that the name is win, we are going to add a new condition, okay? And the condition is uh, that we are going to add plier here, trigger, and there is an option here that says plier group, right guys? So remember, we have an option here that says a operate trigger to a player group. And what it's going to do with this? This is going to transform the trigger and it's going to execute the trigger that we are going to tell the game to do, but it's going to do it in player by player, okay? So remember, if you, as an example, want to do a buff for all the players, just do the same that I did here, create another trigger, and on this one, you are going to add that, that option that says operate trigger to apply your set, okay? So, once you hit that one, you are going to have this menu. So, first it's going to tell you or ask you which trigger we are going to execute. On here, we are going to select triggers and we are going to select the blue win, okay, at first. Then it's going to tell you to, to exactly which player or which again, team is going to execute this. So. We are going to access there. We are going to access to function library. We are going to select pliers and all pliers, okay? But the most important one of this one, to avoid some errors here, is that you need to select here, check trigger condition as true, because if you don't place that, probably it's, make, it's going to make win also to the main plier, to the monster plier, okay? And then you are going to just hit copy, and then you are going to paste this in the same trigger. Of course, I already got it here, so I'm going to delete it. And the only information that you are going to change is this one, okay? So where it says perform team to blue, in the second one, you are going to put green, okay? And that's it. We have already our conditions to win, okay? So with this, your players, if access to that area, they will be able to win. How you can test that? 
just be sure that your player is going to be assigned to the second team and then access to that area. If everything works and you are in the second team, in the team number two, the blue team, that means that you made it and it's working, okay? Now, before continuing, we are going to do or complete our basic systems. So you are going to create a new trigger set or you can use the same, it's up to you. I separate it to have everything more like organized, but you can do the same script sets, or trigger set, sorry. And we are going to do some important triggers here, okay? So the first one is something that we always do in the class and is guys that every time that you create an effect in this scenario, as an example, I don't know, an explosion here, the explosion is going to still be there until you delete it. Even if you cannot see the explosion, the system is going to save that information, so it's like the explosion is going to keep there. And of course, if you do that one time, it's not going to happen. But if you do that a, month, a lot of times, it's going to steal under and it's going to take the memory and it's going to slow down your game a lot. So we do that system that is a little bit smarter. And what it's going to do is going to delete that effect, even if you cannot see it after one minute of usage, okay? So how you can do that? What you are going to do is to create a new trigger. The name is auto delete effects. So you don't have to worry for that. And then you are going to add a new event, okay? The event is going to be on a special effect and the special effect is going to be created in random position, okay? So you are going to select the first. Remember, all of those are different. The difference you can read it at the end is this is going to create effect in a position. This is going to create create effect in a plier. And we, thank you so much for correcting me yesterday. The snow player is plier. And this third one is going to create it in a creature. And the final one is going to create it in a projectile, okay? So we are going to select the one that says in a position. And the action is going to be the next one, we are going to go to timer and we are going to select waiting time, okay? Waiting time is just going to pause this specific um, the, uh, trigger just by one second and right after that is going to execute the next one, okay? So the next one after one second, that is enough time to execute any kind of effect. That's actually too much time. You are going to add a new condition that is going to be also in a special effect. And on here, you are going to have more options. You need to select delete this special effect on the position, okay? Very important, select the one and the position, okay? Don't select the others. Once more, this is positions. This is uh, for pliers. This is for creatures. And this is for projectiles, okay? So you are going to select delete. And you are going to select type of special effect in the event on the event position, okay, guys? And that's it. With this, every time that you create an effect on a position, not in a plier, the system is going to auto delete that so you don't have to worry for that and it's going to run a little bit faster in your game, okay? This is the first one. The second one that we are going to learn how to do is the timer, okay? So if you notice, and you have noticed this, when uh, you are in another game, and let me, okay. I remember that I cannot do it, of course. Yes, I think I can do it, okay? So, for most of the maps, if you open any interface, this, as an example, you open uh, this menu, that is the, the buy things menu, or as an example, you open uh, uh, any any menu in the, in, this, on, in, the, in the game, this is going to be completely deleted, okay? What is going to do this one? This one is going to fix that book. That means that even if you open this kind of menu, the game is going to still show in this specific timer message after that, okay? And the most important one, the one that we are going to do is going to keep showing this even if the player has a different team. So for this, this team, on the, this actually the, the red team is going to show capture the players and the time. For another team, as an example, the blue team is going to show uh, fix uh, the generators and for the normal pliers that are going to be the, the captured pliers is going to tell wait until you get a rescue, okay? So how you are going to do that? We already have the, the first script that is the first trigger, sorry, that is the one that created the time down, okay? Uh, 
uh, now we are going to implement the other one, okay? So you are going to create a new script. The script is going to be show timer, okay? And what you are going to do is to add a new action. The action is just right here in game logic and is designate, uh, designate a timer change, okay? It's very important, no ch timer change. You are going to use this one because this one will allow us to choose which timer we are going to check. And what it's going to do is to execute this trigger every time that the timer changes. That means every second, okay? So when game timer changes, you are going to select that. Remember that we already create that variable that is game timer. Remember, it's on variables. We are going to add the next actions, okay? So the first action that we are going to add is right here on timer and it's show display timer, sorry, or display timer time, okay? That is going to not only make that timer work, it's going to show that timer for the players, okay? So you are going to see this interface. You are going to select a game timer on the first one. Once more, it's some variables we already created. And the most important thing is right here. So you are going to select in the second option, function library. You are going to go to player group and all players in team. In all players in team, you will have this new specific tab. You are going to select team. And in options, you are going to select the team number, the team number two or the, yeah, the team number two, that is the team blue. And on here, you are going to tell the game to repair the generators, okay? Um, very important, on here, um, you will have also some options, okay? So as you notice here, I have a specific icon that is like the warning thing and where you can find those icons, okay? Those text, sorry, those characters. So if you access to the script site, the, wall, the one that I always shared right here, okay? There is going to be a folder because remember that I just reordered this in folders. There is going to be one that says basics. And in basics, you are going to find this that says text characters, okay? So I already filtered all the characters that you can use in mini words. So you just copy and paste whatever symbol you want. As an example, this works also in, as you see right up here. So you can use a lot of icons. So you will give an extra level to the interface to your mini word, okay? So remember just to put for the red, a uh, blue team, sorry, you are going to put repair generators. If you don't have repair generators, as an example, you have, I don't know, uh, like or just fix all the doors or whatever you have, just put put it here, okay? This is the main target for that team. Then we are just going to copy and paste on the same trigger. And what you are going to do is just keep the same information in the first option. In the second option, you are going to change that for team read. So that means options, red team. And for this one, you are going to put a different thing. You are going to put capture the pliers, okay? If you want to keep some color, remember you can use a hashtag or pound and the R in uppercase to give the red color. And you are going to copy and paste once more. This time with the new one that you copy, you are going just to change the team to team red, a green, sorry. And you are going to put here wait to be rescue or whatever you wanted to put, but it's the different targets and information for each team. So what is going to happen is that this is going to show different information to each team. So right now we already have the win conditions. We also have the timer working. What we are going to do next, okay? And this is very important, guys. Let me show you on here. Of course, I already have it in some specific way, but I need to change that so you will be able to see what is going to happen, okay? So when I start the game, I'm going to die, of course, because I am the monster. And if I get down to this location, you are going to see that says repair all the generators to exit. And if I try to access here, it's going to tell me no energy. And it's going to tell me right here in the door information that I need to repair all the seven generators to exit the door. Why do we are putting this? Because we need to give information to the players so they are not going to miss that actually they have to fix the door to be able to exit, okay? So that's the one that we are going to create it. 
okay? So what you are going to do for this, okay? You are going to create another area, just like the way I teach you how to create the area. Remember, tool mode and select the first option. But this area, it's going to be one block ahead from your door. That means that one block before your door and one block after your door, okay? And it's going to cover the most of the area of the door. Why uh, we are going to do this, okay? Because we are also, apart from giving information to the players, we also are going to use this area to remove the blocks in the exit when uh, the players fix the door, okay? So, what we are going to do is just to create that area and you are going to rename it, okay? So, if you find out, I put the name of door exit. It's very important to tag your areas. Remember to just tag your area, just hit here and rename and you will be able to change the name of your area, okay? So, once you have that area created, what you are going to do is to put an option here. You are going to add a new trigger. You are going to rename it as a door warning, okay? So, first option is going to be flyer if player enters an area right here, okay? The condition or the action is going to be door exit, okay? Remember the area that we just created, just select choose area and select the door exit, the area that we just created, guys, that's very important. Sorry, going to accumulate myself a little bit. And what you are going to do is add also a condition, okay? So the only one that is going to receive that message is the blue team, okay? So you are going to go here, you are going to go to player group, uh, to player, sorry, and determine team, okay? In determine team, you are going to span this section and you are going to select players in trigger event, and you are going to select the team in options, team number two, okay? This is only going to happen for the blue team. And the actions is first, remember, we are going to create the text, the floating text that just keeps just moving up, that is going to be no energy. Then we are going to send a chat. And very important, whenever you do a notification, remember to put a sound on it, okay? So the sound that we are going to use is that error sound that you hear, okay? So we are going to do the next thing. First, we are going to add the floating text. For doing this, you are going to go to plier and display text to plier, it's right here, okay? Once you have that, you are going to put on here pliers and trigger event, and on here, you are going to select no energy, okay? You are going to put no energy. Of course, I put uh, the blinking, so to put the blinking, you only need to put this before the text that is a uh, upper, sorry, how this symbol is being called? Okay, it's pound or hashtag, whatever name you want to give it, and lowercase b, okay? Very important, if you have the translation option, remember to translate that. So when you are on that section, just put translate to all, to all the language that you already select. And the game is going to take some time, but it's going to translate, okay? Very important, guys. Not always, and this is very important, is going to have the best translation, but it's going to be better than that to understand anything, okay? So that's going to be the first message then we are going to add a new action the action is going to be employers and it's going to be right here it's this one that says display chat info okay and let me read you in the comments very quickly welcome senate i see that you are coming back oh i missed the chat a little bit and there is a lot of message hello rosie and welcome to the class Okay, very good. Dave one is growing in popula popularity. Okay, well, I see that you are talking in the chat. It's okay, guys. Um, for now, guys, uh, what we are going to do with the chat option is right now we are going to select display option to the chat. Remember the option that I just mentioned before? And on the first part, you are going to select pliers and trigger event. Remember, this is the target, okay? So it's going to show to the same plier to access to that area, okay? The content is going to be repaired all the seven generators, okay? How do you do that? Once more, you will just open here and put inputs. Uh, once more, it's very important to clarify or to specify how much generators you need to fix, okay? Once more, if you need to translate that and you have the translation option, remember that not all the players can have that option, just the developers. And I don't know, I'm not sure 
if developer is from level zero, but I have that option, okay? If I have it, I just hit here, translate to all. And as always, it's not going to have the best translation, um, but it's going to be better to don't have any translation at all. As you notice, as an example here, in some specific languages, you can get this error, okay? So in that case, uh, probably I just have to remove some words. Uh, or what the other thing that you can do what, when this happens to you, because as an example, in my case, I don't know what, uh, what it's telling me here because I don't know how to speak uh, Thai. I think it's Thai, I'm not sure. What you are going to do is just put the, the language in English, okay? And that's it, guys, okay? The final part is just to add the sound. The sound is going to be for the players, so just go here. You are going to scroll down and select sound. You are going to play player's turn on effect, okay? And the sound I use is mark number 10, that is uh, the sound that if you notice is uh, when you hear that sound, you know that there is an error in something that you made, okay? And the volume is number 10, very important, don't activate the loopback option, okay? And that's it, with this, every time a player I access uh, to this area and the player is not from uh, another team more than the human players is going to tell that information so we force the players to look and to know a way that exit okay so even if the player doesn't know how to play when they try to access to the exit they are going to get that message okay so now we have that option also added we left the last one okay and this is very easy this is how to open the door okay and in this is very important, this guys. Most of the times when the players are going to fix all the seven generators, they will be receiving a message that says, now you can exit. But there is a problem, guys. If I am right here and I'm playing, as an example like me, that I like to play with the less resources because it's going to be a little bit faster, okay? That I'm using uh, the near options in Vision, if you notice, that area is not going to be rendered. You see in the background, you see that area is completely deleted, right? That means that actually, if as an example, I told the system to delete the blocks that are in the door, that the area of the door is not being rendering from this area, is not going to happen because there is no pliers in that area, okay? So, probably if you do it in that way, when the pliers try to access here and they were far away from that, the door is completely, it's going to be completely closed because the system detects or miniware detects that in that moment that area were in rendered so it doesn't change any block on there, okay? And that will actually ruin the, the situations because the pliers won't be able to go, won't be able to exit. How do you fix this, okay? What you are going to do is to create a, a boolean variable that means that when you fix all the generators, that boolean, and remember a boolean is a variable that only has two values, true or false. At the beginning of the game, a global variable called open door is going to be completely false. When you fix the generators, it's going to be on, okay? And the condition is very easy, guys. Whenever a player or a player enters to the area where is the room and the exit, as when the player is on that area, these exits is are going to be completely rendered. That means that it's going to appear in the game. We are going to open the door. So with that, we fix that because whenever a player is on that area or not, it's not going to be relevant because when the player access to that area, it's going to open the door, okay? That's the way you fix that, okay? So uh, that's the trigger that we are going to create right now. And it's been called open door, okay? So, first things first, we are going to create this area. And this is very important, guys. In some point, we are going to create the victim system. So, in the victim system, if the players try to access or exit, sorry, from this main room, they are going to be pulled back to the center of the room. That means that the players that are captured won't be able to exit from here, okay? So, we are going to use the same area for this, of course, because it's my map, but of course, you can use multiple areas, okay? So first thing that you are going to do is you are going to create the area. You are going to go to the tool mode right here. You are going to press F3. When you press F3, you are going to create 
from one of the corners to the top of the corners, you are going to create a new area. You see, it's going to cover all this blue part. And the name that you are going to give is Victims Area, in my case. In your case, if it, this is only going to work for Open Your Door, it's going to be Door Room, okay? Once you create that area, you are going to go right here. You are going to move to Triggers and you are going to create a new trigger. The name is going to be Open Door, okay? And just give me a second, I'm going to see the comments. All right. So in the comments, we are okay. I see that you are not asking me any questions. And remember that if you want to ask me any question, just let me know, okay? Yes, uh, for Green uh, Bicycle that is asking me is Green uh, Fear Paradox. That is the map that we are learning how to do. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Guys, right here, we are going to see the different options. There is the one that says events, okay, guys? So for the events, it's going to be the same that we always do. It's just go to pliers, select on here, pliers, enters area. And when you do that, you are going to select victims area, remember, or victims area or open door, whatever you want to give this room, the name. Now we are going to select a condition. And this is the most important, guys, okay? And on this part, I give always give big warnings. Remember when I do this position that actually I don't know what it means, but it's something that you you can know that I'm talking very serious on this. You need to use the same name that I'm going to use for this, okay? It needs to be the same name and it has to have the same uppercase and uh, lowercase, okay? So very important, guys, on here, you are going to scroll down to tools, okay? And on tools, you have some extra conditions. The first one will allow you to determine a timer time. The second one will allow you to turn determine a Boolean comparison, okay? And the third one is a string. So remember what is a Boolean comparison is, Boolean is just a variable that has two values, true or false, it exists or doesn't exist, has energy or not, okay? So we are going to use that. You are going to select Boolean comparison. And on here, you are going, you have to create a new variable, okay? So when you go there, you are going to create a new variable. The name that you are going to give to this variable is open door, okay? You need to do it in the same way that I'm doing, the same text, okay? This is very important. The O is in uppercase and the D is in uppercase. All the other letters are in lowercase. And you are going to put the default value on zero, that means false, okay? Of course, I already have it, so I'm going to change this. Okay, so you are going to select open door, yes, and it needs to be true, okay? On here, of course, you only have true or false, remember true, okay? And on here, what you are going to do is just to delete all the blocks, okay? So the option that we got in Miniworld is that you have to select which blocks you want to do, so try that most of your door is actually having the same blocks, okay? In my case, I have two different ways of blocks. The first one is going to be the, the, the red metal, the second one is going to be the crystal, and the third one is going to be the slider block, okay? So I have all of them here. First one, I'm going to create a new one, a new option. We are going to select blocks, and we are going to select clear blocks, okay? Or delete blocks. And that option is, I think it's break the block. I'm not sure about that. No, it's not break the block. Break the block is actually going to drop the blocks on here. So it's going to be remove blocks in area, okay? So you go here, here again, and you are going to select delete. Where is delete? I can see it. I think it's remove block, no. Okay, it's so remove block in area, okay? You select that one. And on here, you are going to have these options. The first one is that you need to select which kind of block. Remember, just select each one of your blocks in the area you are going to select door exit, okay? That's my area. So remember, I got the door exit here. It's the area that we just created for the exit. That also gives the message to the player. And of course, you need to copy on this, uh, the amount of times that you have different blocks, you need to change the blocks on here, okay? 
And finally, we are going to change the trigger status. So that means that if a player access a game to this area, it's not going to execute this. For a, the turning off a trigger that you only are going to use once, so it's not going to take that up amount of memory, just hit here. And what you are going to do is to add a new one, trigger, operate trigger or change trigger status, sorry. And when you select change trigger status, you can turn on and turn off some triggers. So you are going to select on here, open door, that is the trigger that we just made. And we are going to turn it off completely, okay? Now, we already got this and it's completely off, okay guys? With this, when the player won and access to this area, when all these generators are going to be open, the exit can be completely open, okay? So, uh, I don't know what is that. And I don't want to pronounce it because I know sometimes you can try to troll me. But let, oh, okay. this is not going to take that up time. I want to be very quickly in just in the demonstration, okay? So when you are the player, and you are in some specific areas like this one, you are going to see the smash, okay? So this is composed by the lines that I teach you how to do yesterday, and also this text message, okay, that says jump. If the player, that is the red team, jump in this area, the player will be able to get this super jump here, and will be able to access to the pipelines that are just in the top, like this one, so you can move around your, your scenario. But also, there are some parts that are covered, okay? So when you use the jump button in that areas, you are going to be teleported there. And if you hit the sneak, that is the button that you use to sneak, you actually are going to be able to get down to, okay? And this is only going to work for the red player. The other players can not access here. Okay, and that's the system that we are going to learn how to do. First thing that we need to do is to create an area and create the areas, of course, the physical part of your pipelines that I teach you how to do in the first class. I use two, well, just the pipelines are going to be in the middle so you can connect with the first and the second floor. And another important thing is the size. Okay, remember that the pipelines need to have enough area for the players to enter and around the area, around the map, you need to place some access, okay? So in this case, as an example, it's going to be uh, from a snow space for the player to enter. So it's going to be three by three the squares. I think it's more than enough. Okay. Also here, you see, it's the same size in the top. You can see those specific areas for interact. Okay. So once you create that, what we need to do, and this is very important guys, what we need to do is to create an area around each one of the areas that we want to interact with, okay? So if you see, all the areas that I place for interact are completely make it with, first, uh, the, the lighter, so there's the signal around that is an area that you can interact, and also a hold in the roof, okay? So any player will be able to notice that. And also, for the ones that are in the top that the players cannot access, they're just only the the monsters, you are going to see that it's just the same. It's the same area, but it's covered, okay? Why is covered? Because if it is wearing covered, players will be able to exit to, uh, to access to, okay? So that's very important. This has an area, okay? So, and there's two different ways that I made to interact with this. If you are in the first floor, as you notice, you can jump, okay? That's going to be the first interaction. So if you, as an example, have some specific areas in which players can hide in the top, just you are going to do this. You are going to create an area and the area is going to cover that specific point. So as an example, and this is just an example, guys, if I have a hole here and I want the players to access to that hole, the whole process needs to be the first, the next one to be able to create that, okay? First, you are going to mark the area with this specific one. I highly advise you to get colors. So as an example, the red is only going to be, be able to be used by the red team, okay? 
way to do is actually to mark the area that the player can interact with, okay? This is the first step. The second step is going here and you are going to put on here the actual area, okay? So the area needs to be from the bottom to the other corner, but don't do this, guys, okay? It does, it's not very fun to be, uh, well, or you have to be in the floor directly to use this. Try to increase the size a little bit more so you will have two blocks. That means that even if the player is jump, it's going to be in the area that activates this when uh, the player presses space, okay? Once you do that, you need to rename the area. You are going to rename it on here as interaction or up or jump, okay? This is going to be for the area that you are going to jump with, okay? That is the first one that I'm going to teach you how to do. Okay, of course, I already got this, so I'm going to delete this one. It's just an example that I want to show you, but I already have created mine, okay? Once you do that, you are going to go here, okay? And you are going to create a new section that is going to be pipelines, okay? Very important, guys, the system is going to be called pipelines. And how it works, okay? First, we need to add um, some specific system, okay? And the system is going to be the next one. Whenever a player uses the, the jump key, it's going to ask the system to check if the player is in a correct location and it's going to activate the, the system if it's in the right location, okay? You can do this by placing just location by location, but that is going to be very ineffective and it's going to be very slow, okay? So we have to do the next things. First, we are going to create a trigger. When the player access to any location, what is going to do the system is going to add uh, the player a variable, okay? Second, we are going to add another variable that if the player lives from the area or any of the areas that can be interactive, it's going to remove that variable. And the third one is when the player use the key space, it's going to check if that variable is activated and if it is activated, it's going to do the, the process, okay? So as you mentioned, as you see, it's going to be three different triggers. So we are going to start with jump, okay? So how it works? Once you add all your locations that the player can interact with and all the system, what you are going to do as you see on here, I already have created all the areas for jumping, okay? This is just for jumping, not for crunch. When you do that, you are going to create a new variable, a new trigger. The trigger, okay, is going to be named as a jump at, okay? This is very important, I put duck here because it's something that I put before, but you can place only jump at, okay? When you add that, you are going to add a lot, a lot, a lot of actions once per each one of your different pipelines or the holes where the player can jump. Okay, so what you do is just add an event, player, when player enters to an area, and on there, of course, you are going to select each one of the areas, okay? In my case, I'm going to select whatever that says jump, okay? Remember to rename your areas as jump, so you are going to have a clear uh, information about that, okay? So as you see on here, it's the same event, but it has each one of the areas that I have for jump, okay? So if you have 10 areas for jumping, just select the 10 areas here. Now for the condition, the condition is very easy, guys. We need to check the plier and determine the plier team, okay? Just a second here, I'm going to take some time for reading your comments. Yeah, let's play your map, I like the idea. Welcome, Mr. Alt. Okay. Perfect, Mr. Noob. Welcome back. Okay, in the action is determine player team, guys. In determine player team, you are going to expand this section. In that one, you are going to select players in trigger event and you are going to select the red team. All right, again, options, red team, okay? This is making this trigger only works in red team. And then this is the most important one, okay? So remember the mini camp about natural disasters. In the natural disasters, we have something that was called game status, that if we got a number zero, it was no disaster. Number one, it was a meteor and things like that, okay? This is very similar, 
but this is going to be to be player status. And what we are going to do instead of giving an, a number, we are going to give a tag. That means that whenever the player is in a specific location, we are going to set up a string and the string is going to have a name, okay? So this is a trick and this is how you can do it to avoid making a lot of triggers, okay? So what you are going to do is just go to assign. You are going to select set character string, okay? Um, but very important, on here, we are going to set up a private variable, okay? Because each one of the players is going to have a different variable, okay? Because, you know, each player is going to interact with different things, okay? And this is very important, and this system you can use it whenever you are doing a multiplayer game, so all the players will be able to interact, okay? In this case, we are going to use only this to the red team, but remember that this system, you can do it for a lot of things. So what you are going to do? In the first option, you are going to select function library, you are going to select player and private variable string. In private variable, you are going to create a new variable. And you can call that variable, sorry, you can call that variable duck interaction or you can call it as just interaction, okay? Remember, just create it here. And on here, of course, I'm going to put delete because later I'm going to use this one. But you are going to use the one that says delete a uh, dog interaction, sorry, okay? And very important, this is the most important part, the name that you are going to put in input is jump, okay? So that's going to make uh, the character jump, okay? Very important, I put it in lowercase and it's very important that you memorize how do you write it, okay? It needs to, when you actually put it in, in the other system, it needs to match with this, okay? So jump in lowercase, and that's it, okay? That's how you add the, the monster to the system. So whenever a monster enters to that area, it's going to activate the option to jump, okay? Now, we already have this one created. Now we are going to create another that is being called clear interaction. And what it's going to do is that if the player goes away from any area where actually the player can use an interaction, it's going to clean their interaction. So create a new trigger, rename it, and the way you are going to rename it is interaction clear, okay? And on this, um, you are going to add oh, a lot of events once more, but this time it's not players enter to our area, it's player leaves an area, okay? So whenever the players enter to an area, okay? And on here, you need to select area by area, all the areas that you have for making the jump, okay? Once more, we are going to add the event that says the player is team read, okay? So just remember, you access here, player determine player team. On there, you select players and trigger event, and you are going to select in options, red team. So we are going to be sure that only the monster is going to interact with that area. And you are going to put the same condition, so you copy and paste, remember it's a set character string, it's the same that the previous one, and also it's a player private variable that is going to be took interaction, but very important, on here, we are going to change the name to nil, okay? Or whatever you want it to do. This is going to remove the tag, so players cannot use any skill if they are in the nil area, okay? And we have the base of our system. With this, we will be able to make the pliers jump, okay? And how do you make for make the pliers jump, or how do you do it? We are going to add a third one. So we are going to add a new script. And if you notice, before continuing, guys, jump add and jump interaction is just the same script. The difference is going to be that it's changing the character to nil in interaction clear, and the other one is that it's going to change it to jump. And the other difference is the event, okay? But very important, at the new one, you are going to change the name to educt jump, okay? And what you are going to do is that this is the actual interaction, okay? This is what the player will be able to do if he presses space, okay? So you are going to hit here, okay? You are going to add player, and there is a special or a special group of options that you have here, okay? So you have press, you have long press and release. Press is going to work when you push the key, okay? Long press is only going to work if you keep in or you keep uh, pressing that key and release is actually when you release that key, okay? 
So in this case, we are going to use press. Okay, when you hit press, we are going to be able to select in options which key, okay? So this is going to work for computers and for cell phones. If you are in a cell phone, space is going to be jump. If you are in a cell phone, shift is going to be crunch. And of course, the directionals are going to be the normal directions in a cell phone, okay? So, we are going to select key, uh, the space key. Uh, that means that when the player presses space or jump, it's going to activate this. The first condition is that it's going to be the red team. So remember, player, determine player team. In player team, we are going to select player's trigger event. In red team, remember, select always red team. But very important on here, we are going to check that the condition is that the string that we just created is in jump, okay? So that's why we add this one that converts the private variable into jump, okay? So how did you do that, okay? So you are going to add a new condition, you are going to scroll down to tools, and you are going to select a string comparison, okay? Character string comparison. And when you are in a player string comparison, okay? You are going to select player's private variable. For this, remember, you are going to go to function, guys. As always, function is going to have all the features. You are going to select player prepaid variable string. And in prepaid variable, we are going to select duck interaction, okay? In duck interaction, we are going to select yes. And very important, the match that we, the word that we put on here, that is jump, need to match with upper cases and lower cases with the same that we put in jump interaction at, okay? So jump here and on here is also jump, okay? And the actions are going to be very easy. First, we are going to make the player jump, okay? So the action is very easy, guys, to make a player move, like having a push or a knockback. What you have to do is just go here and you are going to move right here Around this area, there is one option that says make the player move towards a direction. You add that one, and you are going to have that menu, okay? So in the first one, you are going to select pliers in trigger event. The direction is going to be a dove, okay? Because, of course, we are going to make a player do a super jump, and the speed that I use is number two, okay? So this is very important, guys. In games, there is something that probably you don't know, but it's being called coyote time, okay? Coyote time is some technical use that is uh, has a very a very funny uh, like origin, but it's uh, around the Looney Tunes cartoon that was the the coyote and I don't know how to say correcaminos in Spanish, but let me show you a quick image of this of this okay. Hopefully you are going to recognize this. Okay, if you remember this show, probably, or you have seen this show, uh, there, there was a specific part in actually, is this one, that is actually that the coyote or this animal will notice that they are going to, that monster is going to fall whenever he realizes that actually he actually is not hitting the ground, okay? So in most of the platformers and the games, it's very uncomfortable is if as soon as you move away from the floor, you fall directly because probably you miss by just one, one pixel and probably the game is going to take some seconds after you do the action, press the button to execute the action, okay? So all the good games, what they do is actually to make you, to allow you to jump a little bit even if you are already fall from the, from the actual platform, okay? That is the technical uh, name for that and that improves the game a lot, okay? So I did something similar for the Coyote time and is that if you actually are playing and you are in this area, you will have a time to fall, okay? So if you realize you don't immediately fall because if you do that, probably it's going to be very hard to move on here, okay? So as you realize, even after jump a little bit, you have a time, you will have a time uh, to move around and then decide where you are going to fall, okay? It's like you weren't having gravity for a, a little bit. And how do you create that, okay? So the force that you apply here in this area, it's going to be more than the, the one that actually you need, okay? 
So if you realize, I don't need that much force with enough force to get in this part will be enough to be able to access here. But what I do is to put a lot of power on this jump. So even if I miss on here, I will have enough force to keep going up and I'm going to have like no gravity effect for a little bit, okay? So on here, my advice on the trigger that we were doing is that this last, last um, this last paragraph or character will told you how much power you are going to have, okay? How much you are going to jump. So instead of putting one that is the normal amount, I put more force, I put the double so the players will have enough time to plane where they are going to move, okay? So uh, right now there is one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12, 11, like 13 blocks and then for this jump, okay? So with two, I will be able to jump up to 13 blocks. You need to just uh, find out which is the perfect value for you. But remember, don't do that. This jump is going to be just immediately fall, make you fall down directly because it's going to be very uncomfortable. Be sure that you use more power so the players are going to have enough time to play in where they are going to move, okay? And after that, what you have to do is just to place two triggers more. The one that creates an effect in the location and the ones that make a sound, okay? You already know how to create those one. I place this sound that is behavior 38. I'm going to pause the music a little bit so you will be able to hear. And that's the sound I put on. And that's it, okay guys? With this, you already have the interaction for the pipelines, but in my map, there is a second interaction. And let me show you very quickly this interaction. Of course, I will be able to move to that area very quickly. And it's the up or the, yeah, the going up and going down at the same time interaction, okay? So this is going to be a little bit different than the other, that is this one, okay? So in this one, we are not going to make the plier jump. Instead of that, we are going to teleport the plier up or teleport the player down, okay? And this is a little bit different because you, if we make the player jump, of course, this is completely covered, so the player won't be able to exit, okay? In this case, in the case that you are going to use exitable or enterable um, pipelines from the top to the bottom, like this one, the interaction is going to be almost the same, but we need a different features, okay? So first, in the floor, you are going to just put the same slick signals right here around this area. But you also are going to put that signals, that a part that allows you to detect that that area is an interactive area on the top, okay? So player will know that in the bottom and the top is going to have that interaction. Then what you are going to do is to create an area, guys. This is very important. You are going to start with the bottom, with the block that is just directly in the bottom. And you are going to end up to three. My recommendation is between two or three blocks up from the from the top of that line. Okay. When you create that area, we are going to rename it in a different way. We are not going to put jump. You are going to put up down. Okay. Because with this, you are going to understand that the name of that specific area, you will be able to to just do both interactions. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, actually, the torch is, doesn't have a trigger and they'll just check the last class. Can't see, I'm going to send you the link um, via Discord. And if I didn't, at, in one hour, just reminded me in Discord is a script and it's easy to import. So just uh, go ahead and and check that class, or I'm going to send you the link later. Okay, can see? So you will have that torch. Now, um, and it's just a, a, a script, it's not a trigger. Okay, guys, so once you create that area, okay, remember, it needs to be just one area that covers both holes. You are going to go here, and we are going to do the same thing. So this is just the same, guys. We have uh, an actual trigger that uh, adds the plier when it's in the area that allow to do this interaction. And then the same trigger that we used before is going to clear the interaction. 
So the first thing that we are going to do is to go to the interaction clear. Remember the trigger that we create for that. And what you are going to do is just copy and paste the same uh, venta that you have. But this time you are going to add all the areas that are up, down, okay? That will allow you to do this new interaction, okay? And that's it. You don't have to do more things just by adding those specific uh, areas on here when the player lives in the interaction clear a uh, trigger, that's going to clean that, okay? But we need to create the other two. The other two are the interaction up and down and finally the interaction up and down add, okay? So you are going to add a new trigger set. The trigger set is going to be named as a up or down add, okay? So that's going to allow us the player to add that interaction, okay? If you notice, you can use the same jump add uh, interaction that we previously created. Just hit copy and then paste and rename it as an duck up and down. Delete all the events and you are going to add the events uh, that is going to be player centers area that is the same that you already have it. But on here, you only are going to choose the areas that you can go up and down, okay? So as an example, this one that is up and down. Once you have all your areas added here, each one in each one of the events, you are going to change the action, okay? The action is going to be the same. Uh, pliers in trigger event, took interaction, plier private variable. Remember, just copy and paste the other trigger and rename it. What you are going to do is to change this. So in the order, it was telling you to put here jump, okay? On here, you are going to put up, down, okay? Very important, it's together, no spaces, and it's lowercase, okay? And that's it. With that, we have the interaction at for up and down, okay? Then we need to create the duck up interaction, okay? So what you can do is just copy the, the jump a trigger, the normal one, not the jump pad, and you are going to rename it as a duck up, okay? So once you rename the copy it or the, and the copy and paste it a trigger, we are going to just keep the same events, but we are going to add a couple of things, okay? So remember the action is when the player press, it's also going to be the space key because we are going to go upwards. It's going to be only working for the red team, but the most important, in the second one, on here you are going to have jump, you are going to change the name once more to up, down, lower cases, and no spaces. And you are going to add a new action, okay? So this is very important. You need to know in which altitude you are going to activate this, okay? So in this example, if I'm right here, in the menu, I will know that I'm in the altitude 16, okay, guys? Altitude 16 is going to be the one for the bottom. For the one in the top is going to be 21, okay? That means that the difference is going to be five blocks, okay? So we are going to add an action and is that if we are less than 21 blocks, what we are going to do is to jump, okay? We are going to be teleported to the top. That means that we are only going to use one area for both of them. So if the area is, or the location of the player is below the top, we are going to jump up. If it's above the top or in the top, it's going to go down, okay? So how do you do that? You access here and you are going to use numerical, uh, sorry, coordinate value of a location, okay? When you add that, you need to select which location, okay? So you are going to select player location on here. When it's telling you which location, just go here, function library, player and player location. And in here, you are going to select pliers and trigger location. And the coordinate value, it's going to be Y, okay? So remember in the options, we have three coordinates, X, Y, and Z. Once more, for those that didn't know how to get those coordinates, on here, you can see it in the mini menu. Remember, just hit on here. You have the first one that are X, and the second one is going to be C, and the altitude is going to be Y, okay? Also, what you can do is just hit on here and select I am here, and in the chat is going to tell you the health that is going to be 16, okay? That is going to be the last value. So once you got this, you are going to put the altitude here that is going to be 21. Remember, put the altitude of the top, okay? And the condition on the center is the most important, okay? It's going to be less than, okay? If you put any other, it's not going to work, so just put less than, okay? And once you are there, 
what we are going to do is instead of jump, we are going to change the player location. So in jump, jump, you are going to have all these options. What you are going to do is to delete the first one, okay? And uh, you are just going to keep the effect and the sound. You are going to add a new condition and the, a new action that is going to be change player location, okay? Guys, did you know where you can find player's location? It's very easy. Go here and in player, you are going to select, of course, it's around this area. Okay, change location, okay? Okay, and yes, I think it's that one, if I'm in the wrong uh, passy. And once you do that, you are going to have these options, okay? So the first one, you are going to select player in event. That's the player that is going to execute the action. And this is very important. In the current location, you are going to select function library and location offset. What is going to do location offset? Location offset is going to take a location, any location, and you can tell with the next A. Uh, variables that we are going to use inside if you want to move the location for where we are going to execute the action a little bit down or a little bit up or to any kind of, of direction, okay? So what that's what we are going to do. We are going to select location offset. In location offset, you are going to select on here which player is going to change or execute the action. So we are going to select player location. Remember, it's the player location. The player that is executing the action, that's the point that we are going to take. And we are going to swift along the coordinates axis, okay? And the only number that you need to change is the middle, is the Y axis, that is the altitude. And what we are going to do is, if you put a positive number, it's going to go up. If you put a negative number, it's going to teleport the player down, okay? So in this case, as we need to go from the bottom to the top, we are going to move six blocks, okay? Remember, we are going to move six blocks because our first uh, floor, the floor that we are jumping with, is 16 and the, the floor in the top is 21, okay? So, like, the difference is going to be only four blocks. We are going to jump two blocks over it, okay? And that's it. We can keep the other ways that you have it. Of course, if you have to want to change the sound or you want to change the effect, you can do it, but right now you should have that interaction working, okay? So right now, your pliers will be able to, when they press jump here, they are not going to jump, they are going to be teleported here instead, okay? Above this area, if you get teleported in the middle, just add another number to the six, as an example, at seven in this uh, center, in this part, if you are too high, just reduce that number a little bit, okay? So if, as an example, you get teleported like this, just reduce the blocks, the amount of blocks necessary to get into the top, okay? That's going to be the first one. For the second one, that is going to be a little bit more easier, what you have to do is just copy and paste and rename it as a duck down, okay? So you are going to copy duck up and you are going to rename it as a duck down. You are going to keep the same condition and actions, but very important, on here, on the third condition, you are going to change just this option, okay? The option in the center, you are going to change it from list that is right now here. You are going to change it to greater than or equal to 21, okay? To the same number, okay? And in the actions, you are going to use just the same action, but instead Put in here, um, like the like the number that you put before that was six. You are going to use minus two, okay? Just here in the middle, and that's it. With that, your map is going over to the map that you are going to use. It's going to allow the player to get up and down, okay? But very important, guys. As we are now in the top, we are not going to use the space key because that is not going to be intuitive. Instead of that, we are going to crunch. So how you are going to do that? Just change in the V and the Vend decay. So remember, we were in the space. We are going to change to sweet. Uh, yes, shift. Shift is the, going to be the key that allows the player to go down, and that's it. If you press that, now you will be able to get down. Okay. So right now we have a system in which your players will be able to get up and get down from this area. But most important one, if we keep the system like it is right now. There is something that we will be missing, okay? 
And what we are going to miss is the next thing. Let me change, okay? Let me, let me change that information. Let me show you very quickly, okay? So right now our system is going to work. That's something that we are missing. Both systems are going to work actually. But if you know, and if you notice, there is something that left that is that we don't create like any information here. Suppliers are going to see a square in the floor, but they don't know that they can interact actually with this. So the last trigger that we are going to use or create is actually to make that happen, okay? To let, let the players know that they can jump and they can down, okay? And how you can do that, guys, okay? What you are going to do is that we are going to create a new trigger, okay? The trigger is very easy, guys. And this will allow you to create text around any area, okay? So you can get this trigger and you can use it for a lot of things. So you are going to create a new trigger. You are going to rename it as a jump info, okay? What you are going to do in the event is just create game logic in game time. Um, sorry, when, yeah, it's in game time. No, yeah, it's actually in game time, okay? Oh no, sorry, it's game running time, okay? So on here, we need to select game running time and we are going to buy, uh, put five seconds later, okay? When we create five seconds later, because most of the times probably uh, the players are going to have like different times because it's a multiplayer game, the, when they start the game, so we are going to be sure that all the players can see this, okay? And the action is going to be the same action, but it's going to be copy and paste it, okay? So what you have to do is to create here, you are going to go to a display information, and you are going to create a displayed information in a location, okay? When you open that, you are going to have this menu. You are going to select on here text box, okay? For those that didn't know that, with this, you can create the progress bar, you can create the text box, and also you can create some arrows in the floor and some guidelines to a specific area. What you are going to do is to select the text box option, okay? So the text box content is going to have the same color. In my example, it's going to be red and it's going to be jump pointing upwards. Remember, if you want to get that arrow, it's just in the script section. Once more, it's around this area. You have a collection of arrows that is going to be much clearer for the players. The font size is 16 and the ID is number one. And the position you need to select one by one, but you are going to select here um, function library central location of an area and you are going to select your area so remember we have all these areas that have been named that is the one that we interact you are going to select jump for one and you are going to select one by one until you complete all your areas it's just the thing that i do here okay that's going to be for the first one uh, for the other one that says up and down remember that is going to be a little bit different okay so with this, you are going to have all your jump areas with the information. That means that this one is not going to have it because in this one, you can jump and get down, okay? So what you are going to do for those specific areas that are just using one area to have both interactions, you need to create another one, okay? So you just can copy and paste this one Okay, and you are going to rename that one. So remember, just copy and then select paste and select the same trigger. And in this one, you are going to rename it as a info app, okay? You are going to delete all the areas that you have it and you are going to create one from zero. It's the same event. The text box is going to be keeping jumping, but uh, for this one, we need to use a different thing on here. So, on here is just going to be jump, but on here we need to add a new one, okay? So you are going to use function library, location offset, original changes. And what we need to check is the original area, initial position, that is going to be the center, okay? So why this is different than the normal one? Because in this case, the center of my location, it's going to be around here. So if I keep using the same location right here, 
it's going to create meet the text right in the middle. And the, the, the idea is to get the text just one block atop the floor around here and one block atop the floor here, okay? So what you need to do is to manually change that. So you are going to put on here on the freeze options, just function library, central location of an area, and you are going to select the area up down. But on here, you are going to change the numbers according to the area. So let me use as an example this same uh, part, okay? I need to check which area is this one to be able to change it very quickly. So we are going to know for sure. Okay, this is not this one. Oh, let me see if it's this one. Okay, just a second. No, it's not that one. I think it's the one that says Aria Tree, if I'm not wrong, okay? Let me check, Aria Tree. And yes, it's that one, it's the Aria number three, okay? So what we are going to do is to change on here that text, okay? I suppose here is the Aria number three, yes. Okay, so if you see here, I have got a minus three here, I'm going to change it to zero, okay? Just to show you how it works. And I'm going to play the map, okay? One second, guys. Okay, so if I move to this area, remember just the area web that we are going to check. If you see, the button for jump is just in the middle, so it's two up, okay? So to to just move down this a little bit, the calculation I made is just to check. It's right here. It's you need to move it down one, two, three blocks. And that's what I did right here. Okay. So remember, you need to, to manage this manually. You need to check if, where it's going to work the best. Once more, if I change this to minus three, it's going to work fine because it's going to take the center of the region and it's going to reduce three blocks. Okay. That's going to be for the upper parts. Remember that you need to add two of them, okay? The second is going to be for the actual a uh, down area. So instead of a uh, placing, so you are going to just copy and paste for each one of the areas. And in the second, we are going to create the text that is in the top. So if, if you see right here, most of the times it's going to be a here, an area that says sneak, okay? So let me show you once more very quickly here. Okay, one second. And now that I'm moving, you are going to see that in the town here says jump, and on here says sneak, okay? We are going to create the second one, sneak. And if you realize, it's the same process, but we change the text and we change the position, okay? So just copy the action that we create for the app part. You are going to copy and paste but for the second one, we are going to modify the text box. You are going to put sneak instead of up. Once more, I use the same color, but I put the arrow down. Okay, once more, in the same script section, you will be able to get that uh, characters just to copy and paste, okay? Now, in the actions is going to be the same. You are going to select the same center of the area, but this time, instead of put a basic number, you are going to put a positive number and you need to keep trying until you get the perfect size, okay? Just to be this text upper right here, okay? And that's it. With that, you are going to have already um, this working, okay? So right now, uh, you can go ahead and test after you do this if your map is working in normal player. And the final part for the class is the easiest one. We are going to do the generators, okay? So in the last class, we create all the objects. Remember, we create two different objects, one for the fully working generators. And we also create another block here for the actual, um, well, one for the damage generator. That is the one that you put in the map by default. Remember, I put seven of them and one for the working generator that is going to want to be the one that with more light and that doesn't have an effect, okay? These are going to be the requirements how you are going to do that last system, okay, guys? Very quickly, because we already ended the class, we are going to go to Jeju scripts once more, link here in the description, in the chat, 
and you are going to go to Order Escape, okay? In Order Escape, you are going to have this specific trigger, okay? This is specific script, so sorry, this one that says Repair Generators. What you are going to do is just open that one, and in here you have this button that says Copy. You are just going to copy that. You are go to your you are going to go to your script section, and you are going to create a new script. Okay. Remember, first thing first, you just copy and paste that. That means that you are going to have this. Just paste it. Probably in cell phones, you are going to see different things here. Okay. And just put saved. If you can save that, that means that you copy uh, in the right way. Just rename it. Generators. Okay, and when you have that option of generators, as always, you need to set up the generators, okay? So I'm going to use this software. As always, I use this software because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing with these scripts, okay? Because I can do zoom out and zoom in. And as always, you have this section on here. You, need, you are going to have all the requirements. You need to complete the setup, have a damage generator block, a fixed generator block, and a wrench item, okay? So what you are going to do is to scroll down to the setup section. And very quickly, on here, on the first option, you are going to put the amount of generators that you have in your map. The system is out going to auto detect that, okay? The second one, is the amount of reward of coins that you are going to get if you fix the generator. So if you realize when you fix the generator and you complete the fixing, it's going to just drop a lot of coins. This is the amount of coins that each generator is going to drop. If you keep it like it is, you are going to drop 10 coins. So my best advice is first just set up this. So if you put in your game 10 generators, change the number here, okay? After that, we have the ID sections. On this, you need to put the different mobs ID, okay? So, first one, it's going to be the mob ID. Actually, it's not the mob ID, it's the block ID for the generator. So, remember, on here, you need to put the, the block ID for the generator. So, once more, you need to get the block or a number for a, your mob, okay? Sorry, for your generator. So, on here, you are going to go right here, select block. Go to custom and select your damage block at first, okay? So in here it's telling me it's going to be two, 2009, you are going to select that one. The second one is the generator that is being repaired, it's the number uh, of the block of the generator repair it, okay? So go to custom and select the repair it generator. Then we have the repair uh, to ID is your wrench, okay? So in case you want to have your wrench, just select here, okay? Go to item and select your wrench, okay? On here you can see my wrench is 418. Uh, 4118. Remember, this is the wrench that we created yesterday, not the normal game wrench. And finally, we got the coin that the or the item that the generator is going to spawn. So just go ahead and item and select the coin that we create yesterday, okay? So yesterday we create this gun. When you select it, it's going to have already all the information here. And right now your system is going to work, okay? Next, we have the trigger settings. On here, if you follow the steps and you create a variable, the Boolean one that is open the door, just keep that one on here, okay? So what it's going to do is going to sync scripts with triggers and it's going to tell the triggers to change the variable from true to false to open the door, okay? If your door doesn't open after just fixing the generators, you need to go back here and change the name of this specific variable right here that is in between the notation marks for the same that you have on your triggers. Remember, variable, variable here, just go to boolean value and it needs to have the exact name, okay? No spaces and no uppercase at the beginning of each word. And that's it. On here you have some extra options. If you realize when I'm fixing the generators, I'm going to have a bar, you can change that information, but my recommendation is just keep it like this. And that's it. With this, you are going to have your generators working. As you see, no need to do anything more than just put the trigger and set up that options, okay? So guys, in this moment, the class has been already ended. In this point, you will have already working your exit. You can exit from the game and won. 
and you have also the conditions for one, okay? Tomorrow, uh, sorry, next week class, we are going to create the capture system and also we are going to create the monsters, okay? And with that, in the class number five, you already are going to have a completely playable game with different monsters. In the class number six, we are going to learn some extra tricks to, as an example, scare the players, but that's going to be next week, okay? For now, you will have, as I mentioned before, one game that is completely playable that you can use some interactions to actually play around and that has all the most of the items working full, okay?